The first thing I'd like to jump into is the convergence of still photography with motion. Uh, as some of you may know, I was a staff photographer at the New York Times for eight years. I have about 20 years of experience with still photography. And with the launch of the 5D Mark II and a short that I shot, Reverie, I jumped into the world of motion, shooting with everything from 5D Mark IIs to C300s to Ari Alexas to uh, obviously red epics, dragons, and uh, weapons, uh, as well as phantom cameras, etc. Uh, what I've always been fascinated in, no matter what I'm shooting, is the quality of the image. Um, obviously, there's no such thing as a perfect camera. This being said, late last year, a company called Red, which I'm sure you all know, released a camera called the Red Weapon. Here it is. Uh, it shoots in 8K, uh, which if you think about it, uh, for most people, sounds like an overwhelming number at first. Uh, who needs 8K when most of us still, are still watching 1080? Obviously, we've been sold on uh, 4K video for quite a while uh, in terms of it being quote unquote future proof. Uh, as you know, Netflix will only accept 4K video. But why should you care about 8K? Well, I think actually it's a very, very big thing. Um, the reason is not only are you shooting incredibly high quality IMAX video, if you will, which is exactly, these are the exact tools they use for IMAX films, but 8K for still photographers translates into 36 megapixel. Uh, I've been a big fan of RED since the RED 1. I've had every one of their bodies. Uh, and 6K was close, but it was still only a 21 megapixel image. Now for some people, that's more than enough. But if you're a fine art photographer or a higher end photographer, or anyone who actually really cares about that incredible image quality, um, 36 megapixels or 8K is that golden number where you can literally justify shooting with this camera, both stills and video at the same time. Obviously, this is a more expensive camera than a DSLR, no question. I'm not gonna sell you on the fact that it's the same price range or that you'll be shooting the same amount of data. We all know that it's a fact that you're gonna shoot a lot of more data and it's gonna cost you quite a bit more to enter into this system. That being said, if you do or choose to do so, I can guarantee you're gonna be on the cutting edge. But let's forget that for a second. Why do I shoot with the RED? Well, as you know, or as I've mentioned, I shoot both motion and stills. And it's a struggle to have to always pick between going on a trip with either still cameras or video, and both is seldom an option given just the weight and the amount of equipment you have to bring. This is the first body that I've ever had the chance to use that allows me to do both at the same time. That's the key. So this camera shoots at 60 frames a second at 8K. If you think about that, the highest end DSLRs shoot between 12 to 14 frames. This is 60 continuously without any sort of lag and without having to pick the exact moment. You can pick it in post. Now, there's actually another feature here that's extremely important. This camera has a 30 second pre-record, which means it's continuously recording, and whenever you push the trigger, it'll record 60 seconds back into the future. That's huge. You may have seen this uh, on uh, the nature shows where they try to capture the shark coming out of the water with the phantoms, and no one has the reflexes to capture them breaching initially through the water but because the Phantom is always pre-recording, the moment they touch the button, they can go back in time. What does that mean for still photographers or filmmakers? Well, we have two choices. We can be rolling all the time on our video cameras, uh, and as you know, that sucks up a massive amount of data and it's wasteful, or we can have it in pre-record at all time, and when something happens, we trigger the button and it goes back in time. Now, for videographers, that's huge. For still photographers, that's a game changer. And you know, I don't like using that word much uh, because it's overused, but think about it for a second. Uh, many of you who have been around in photography for quite a while um, will realize at a certain point getting exposure right, choosing the right lens and position is relatively easy. The hardest part is anticipating the future. In effect, you're trying to predict what's going to happen. And what we're looking for is that serendipitous moment, whether it's someone walking into frame, a bird flying into your wonderful landscape, you get the idea and you're always waiting for that. So if your goal in life is to capture that moment, wouldn't you want to edge up and be able to go back 30 seconds in time at 36 megapixels, 60 times per second, and by the way, full raw. Every frame on this camera is a full raw still frame that you can edit in Photoshop, in Resolve, in Premiere, in any editing software. So think about that for a second, and you'll probably understand why I have kind of transferred to this platform for most of my needs.